about our renovation project. Thank you all for taking time to come. We've got a lot of information to share tonight. At the end of the evening, if you would like, we've got some handouts here for about commonly asked questions that um, we'll probably go over most of these tonight, but if you want to take a copy of that, be a lot to remember. I think all of you probably know me, but just in case, I'm Susan Marshnow. I'm the principal here at Riley Elementary. Up here with me is Mr. Tim Salters. He is our part of our PR committee here for the BCSC. I would first like to, before I begin, make apologies for Mr. Parsley. He is at a superintendent's meeting that he had to present at out of town. We were running out of dates where we were all available. We felt like we needed to go ahead and have this meeting. So we've been, we have met with him. He knows everything we're presenting tonight, but he did want me to apologize that he is in here at this meeting. So we have a lot to be excited about. I don't know if any of you guys came last year at this time basically to the, the public meetings they were having about the future of our schools. And when we left here that night, we were feeling like this is our last year. They're gonna close our school down. And we could be at a totally different place at this point. Because I was thinking, okay, we're gonna have to plan a closing your school party. And our teachers were thinking, where am I going to be after next year? So there was a lot of apprehension and I think anxiousness after that meeting. People expressed to the board and Mr. Parsley that they wanted Riley School to stay Riley School. They listened to you, they listened to us, and now we're looking at a renovation that will make our building look like it's brand new. So we have a lot to be excited about. Um, on top of that, the first plans that they came back with for the renovation was basically kind of the things that we wouldn't think about. When you walk in someplace, I really don't think about the air conditioning unit and heating and lights. Those were the kind of updates we thought we were getting. That was still good. We, we were glad we were getting those. But as the plans have gone on and bids have come in, bids have come in lower than we expected. So we're getting much more done to our building than we first anticipated. Um, I informed the teachers about three weeks ago that we're getting carpet in the classrooms. We're getting paint. I'll, I'll go into all that, but there's a whole lot more that's gonna happen to our building than just structurally. So we are super excited about what's happening at Riley Elementary. The other thing, and I know where you're gonna have some apprehension is the beginning of the school year, our students are gonna be displaced. They're, the contractors will be here Thursday, the day after school ends. They are going to work as hard as they can to get us back here as quickly as we can. So when we think about the other schools, because they are getting a lot more renovation, those students could possibly be displaced a whole school year. We're not going to be. So we're going to get to feel and see all the newness of this building next year. We plan to be back here by Christmas break. If it's sooner, great. But we're shooting for about Christmas break where we will be back. So second semester, we're all going to be back here together. So we feel like that we can, we can do this for one semester. We, we have worked out plans, so we're confident that we can make this work. Um, building assignments for next year. I have been to all of these sites. I've done tours with them. Mr. Salters has been with me. Community Methodist Church out across the high school will house our kindergarten students. Washington Christian Center will house our first, second, and third graders. And that's next to Greg Park, the former Washington Elementary School. And Free Methodist Church will host um, our fourth and fifth grade classes. Mrs. Orchard's class will be at the middle school because we want them to be in a handicap accessible place. We want a nurse to be on site at all times because there are a lot of needs with her kids. Um, 
So that's where we're going to be housed. Now, one thing to keep in mind is Nurse Nancy will be still visiting all the schools. I will still be making rounds. I will be housed at Washington Christian. That will be where our main office is. Mrs. Newton will be in one building. Mrs. Connor will be in a building. So teachers aren't going to be there alone. There's going to be someone else in there with them to help make decisions, monitor people coming and going, and, and all that. So now you ask, how, what are you going to do about transportation? How are you going to get these kids where they need to go? And I think we've come up with a really good plan. We have worked with um, the transportation director, and we had several options that we were tossing around. We have approximately 60 kids that walk to school. We have about that many kids that are dropped off by parents. If you bring your student to school, then you're going to transport them to Washington Christian. That Washington Christian is going to be our hub. That's going to be our main location. Everyone will come to Washington Christian in the morning. They'll have breakfast there. And then we will load. One bus will go to Community Methodist. One bus will go to Free Methodist. At the end of the day, there will be a bus go to Free Methodist, pick those kids up, bring them back to Washington, go to Community Methodist, get the kindergartners, bring them back to Washington, and we will dismiss all at once from Washington. So in the morning, Everyone's going to be there together. Everyone can have breakfast at that site. Then we'll load up kindergarten, fourth and fifth grade. At the end of the day, those kids will come back to Washington Christian for, excuse me, for dismissal. Okay? Does anyone have any questions about that? I want to emphasize the walkers. How we're going to and, and we are we're adding a bus route for those kids that currently walk to school. So. They, parents don't have to transport them. If they're walkers, then they're going to be added to a bus route. So instead of having one bus for Riley School, we're going to have two. And we, we've done the numbers. We can, we can put that many kids on two buses. If you bring your kids now, instead of bringing them to Riley in the morning, you're just going to bring them to Washington and drop them off. We've already started working on plans of how parents will pull in, where you'll drop them off, where parents will park, where buses will go, and we're going to have signs in all locations so you know exactly what to do. The other thing that we will be doing, not we, not me, Mr. Salters and his crew will be creating videos. So they'll have a camera in their car. If you're a parent, this is what you do when you get to Washington School. If you're going, if you have to pick up your child, and he's a fourth grader, here's what you do if you have to go to Free Methodist. This is where you park, this is the door you go in. We will be posting those on social media sites so you can view those. Those will be available. So anyone who's not here tonight, those will be available in the future um, so everyone can get this information out. So really, we're gonna have a normal school day. Our kids are going to come together in the morning. We're going to have breakfast together. Mrs. Worrell and Mr. Frederick will still be on duty for those early kids that come at 7.15. That's not changing. Kids can still come at 7.15 if they need to. Teachers are going to have their morning instruction. We're going to have lunch in each location. We'll be working with Mr. Zady on how lunch will be served. If you remember a few years ago, we didn't have a kitchen here. We were a satellite food service, which means they cooked it somewhere else and they brought it here. We've had a kitchen, they built that on about five years ago. So it's, we're gonna go back to how we were. They will prepare the food and bring it in warmers and serve in each site. Kids will get their recess, they'll have afternoon instruction, and then we'll have dismissal. So the only thing that's really changing about our day is we'll have some kids transported to other sites. Instruction is going to happen. Our goal is that your kids continue to be educated. That's what we're here for. Daycare. What are we going to do about daycare? Daycare will be at Clark Middle School. 
and those kids that go to daycare will get on bus six probably, could be the other bus, from Washington Christian and they will ride out to Clark, unload. Our daycare workers will be there. They'll have a specific spot for them to go and daycare will run as normal. Again, there'll be procedures for how you pick your kids up from daycare. And, and we'll have videos for that as well. The other thing, you've probably heard stories about traffic at, at, at Lincoln and Clark during the day. Daycare will be past that. You will, they'll all be gone by the time you go to pick up kids. And the buses come in a different lot, so our kids won't be dealing with where their parents are either. This was one of them that we had to make sure we had a plan for. Communication is going to be key in, in the next few months. So we, we had, again, lots of ideas to throw around. E and this is what we came up with. Each school will have a cell phone. We've already purchased them. We want it to be simple for you guys, though. We don't want you to have to remember three different numbers. So our goal is that you will call the Riley Elementary number that you call now, 882-7953. There will be a phone tree, and it may be a recording that says, if you would like to reach um, Community Methodist that houses Kindergarten, press one. If you would like Free Methodist, press two. If you want Washington Christian, press three. For the secretary, press four. Mrs. Blue will be back. She'll be the one answers those calls for the secretary. But that way, you don't have to try to remember which number do I call for what place. You call one line, we can get you where you need to go. Safety and security. You know, we're pretty secure here. You guys know we're, our schools are locked down during the day. We don't want that to change. We want our students safe. We know you want your children safe. So again, it goes along with the cell phones. We will be purchasing, what are they called? Uh, video doorbells. Video doorbells at each site. And there will be signage where you go that will say for, ring this bell for Vincent's Community Schools. You'll ring that bell. An app will open on our phone. We can see who's at the door. And then we can go and answer the phone. So each site will have that. The other thing about that is if I'm not at Free Methodist at that time, I can still see on my phone who's at Free Methodist. I, the office people can see all sites through our phones. So we're, we're excited about that because that was kind of the one thing that we were trying to figure out. Um, and, and we've talked to all of these directors and pastors, and we want it to con continue to be a separate entity. We don't want to have their secretary having to deal with our parents and vice versa. So that's why we went with the doorbell system. Those will be installed at each site. Yeah, and, and the churches are all already locked down. So that's not going to change for those sites. They have a few select people that have keys that have access to the building. We will know who those people are. But they're already locked down throughout the day. That, that won't change. Um, if they have someone that's in the building, we will know because they'll have a tag or identification. We will know who those people are that has access to their buildings. But not just anyone can come up and walk in, even though it's a church. They're already locked down now. Special classes and services that we offer. And we offer a lot of services for our kiddos. That's not changing. We have Miss Rainey is a full-time special education teacher. Miss Holland is with us a half a day. By law, we have to service those kids. That won't change. They will still be servicing those kids. We offer, also offer Title I services. That won't change. Our Title I ladies will be traveling from site to site. They'll have 
probably little suitcases that they're taking with them or something, but they will still go so your kids are getting those extra services and interventions that we already have in place. We will not change those kind of services. I mean, they might change a little bit, but your kids are still going to get those services. So the most important thing and the way to stay up to date, if you have Facebook, like Riley Elementary on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Vincent's Community School already has a web page. Follow that, check on that occasionally. We will constantly be updating those social media sites to keep you informed. You know, we're down to eight days of school, so there's gonna be plans coming as throughout the summer. So that's your way to stay informed about any changes throughout the summer when you can't just pick up the phone and call the office because no one will be there. So please continue, encourage people to follow these sites. And then if you have questions, post it. We can respond to that. Yeah. I'm going to let Mr. Salters talk about a specific website that we're in the process of building. Along with the videos that we're going to create that show you specifically, you know, pick up, drop off, if I'm dropping somebody off late or picking up somebody early, how to use the doorbells, all those things to try to make things easier for you. That's the whole goal of this. I mean, we know that this is going to be a little bit different, but we want it to be easy for you. So the key thing that we're trying to do is we're kind of putting together all these questions into a specific Riley building website. You don't have to remember anything different. We're gonna tag it onto the Facebook page for Riley and we're gonna make it a tab on the Riley page, the BCSC page. So all those things you guys already know, it's just gonna be right there. So we're gonna continually update it and make sure those things are out there continually put those things out through our social media, make sure it's in the you know, newspaper and radio so you know those things are available for you. If there's something that we haven't addressed and you want us to, make sure you email Mrs. Marchineau and then she can get it to us so we can get that information out here. The whole process and the whole point of this is we want this to be as easy as possible for you. I mean, this placement is probably not something that everybody gets excited about, but we know this is something that we can handle. We're very confident in our plan. We like the way that we're going with this, but we want it to be as easy as possible for you as we go through this process. And you know, Mr. Salters said, we've tried to think of everything. There's going to be things we didn't think of that come up. There's going to be bumps in the road. I'm gonna be honest with you. There is never a plan that is perfect. But we will work through those. We will communicate with you. But our goal is to educate your children and keep them safe during the day, which is exactly what we do right now. So if something, one of those bumps comes up, be patient, give us time to fix it, and we will work on that. We know we will be continually working on this until we're back here. Um, Mrs. Connor, Mrs. Newton and I, Nurse Nancy, we've already talked about at the end of each day, the, three, the four of us will be sitting down talking about things. Do we need to change something? So we have to communicate with each other. We will be communicating with the churches when they have activities going on so our students aren't around their activities. But we also want communication with you. So if you have a question, ask. If you think of something that we didn't address tonight, talk to us. Just like every other day of school, we're a team. We can't do this without you, and we all are here for your child. So please communicate with us. Please ask questions. Um, but we have a lot to be excited about. And Mrs. Newton, will you go down and get the color samples and the carpet sample? I was gonna have those out so you can see them. Um, so while she's doing that, let me just tell you a little bit more about what's happening. Um, starting with the outside, all new windows for the whole building. They'll be updating air conditioning, heating, lighting, 
And we kind of thought it would probably stop there, but there will be carpet in all the classrooms, all new flooring in the hallway, updating the restrooms in the hallway, um, painting in the classrooms, in the hallway, um, new curtain for the stage. So things that we didn't even think, they were there, but we were like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Almost all of those things are happening. So teachers are excited. They've picked out colors for their classrooms. Teachers may be moving to different spots when we come back, but um, they know where they're going. They know where they're going in the fall and then when they come back. So um, in the next week and a half, if you come in, you're probably going to see lots of boxes. We're starting to box up those things that we don't use right now. That doesn't mean that we're done teaching. We're still teaching. We're still working with your kids. So when your kids go to art, that teacher is probably boxing. Um, our Title I ladies, they're working on end of year testing. In between that, they've been helping box. So you're probably going to see boxes around because at the end of the day, on May 25th, when we leave here, we're not coming back. This building will be empty on, at the end of that day, like midnight. That's our, we have to be out of here by 11 o'clock that night. So, but, but we will be boxing. Teachers are marking what they have to take with them um, that they need for next year, and then we'll be putting a lot of stuff in storage. So if you want to come up, um, this is one of the carpet samples that, was it, that will be in the classroom. The main color will be about a shade darker than this. Where you see a blue line going through here, um, depending on the color the classroom teacher chose, it could be a blue line, it could be from this orchid line, or like the candy apple green color. There's samples of the floor for the hallway. It's not a tile, but um, it will have these colors dispersed in the hallway. We're also getting new lockers out here for our third, fourth, and fifth grade, new coat hooks for K2. Um, oh, and then they will be tearing down in the classrooms where the old heating registers are currently underneath all the windows. All of that will be coming out. There's some old shelving on one wall in the classroom. That will be coming out. They're going to be building reading cubbies for kids. And probably on each end we'll have maybe a storage cabinet or some built-in bookcases. So, you know, we, we want to be here, but we are excited about what we're going to come back to. And I think the kids are going to be excited. We will definitely be having open houses once we're back here, so you can come and see. And, um, you know, when we have meetings, we'll have a place where we can have meetings as we need to. We'll have probably a back to, back to school night slash open house. So you can go see where your kids are going to start school at. You can visit those rooms, see the teachers, talk to the teachers. You can ask questions at that point if a question comes up. So we will be having an open house at each site before school starts. Typically, I work about five days after the end of school. I, I will still have access to our phone number. You can always leave a message throughout the summer on there, and it will go to my email, and then I can call you back if something comes up. We will be back in the office 10 days before the start of school. So you can always call then, or we will be set up in our office at Washington Christian. So if you need something, you can come there. So I'm gonna leave these colors out up here on the table. Also, don't forget if you would like to take one of these papers home about frequently asked questions, just in case you can't ring, you know, if you're like me, I will forget part of this before I get home. So is, does anyone have any questions, concerns about what I shared that I can try to answer? Yes.
Yes, Nurse Nancy will be visiting each site and taking care of medications. She will also have other nurses trained, so if she's out then, like Community Methodist will probably, we would call one of the um, high school or middle school nurses. So we'll, Tecumseh would probably tag with Free Methodist. So we will have other nurses that will be available if Nurse Nancy's at one site and something happens at another site. And that's no different than what we already do. The nurses work very well together. You know, if Nurse Nancy's gone and there's not a sub, I can pick up the phone and call any of them and they will be here. And that won't change. Yes? I know this sounds little and unimportant. Everything is, is not little. student desk and chairs from here. If the teacher has tables in their classrooms now, they will have those. They will have their books from here. All of the supplies they use, those will be there. So when they walk in, it's going, because there's going to be a teacher's desk. Now, there may not be all kinds of stuff all over the walls, but there will be desks, chairs, resources. All of that will be there for the students. were visiting all these buildings they've been very willing to work with us and very open so we might not see what you would usually see in the classroom with like the walls just plastered but they're gonna give you a certain feel and they're gonna be able to put their work up and it, it's gonna feel like a classroom and what's nice about using churches is they already have those kind of classroom setups there so I mean is it gonna be like what we've had here not exactly but it is a classroom setup and you know we'll have those open houses over the summer, so you would go in and see and kind of get a feel for that as well. Yes. Are we still going to be able to continue our kids social Absolutely. That is a program that we cherish. We want that partnership. Our kids love that program. The only thing that would be different is mentors. <laughs> rather than coming here, we would ask you if your student is at. Washington Christian to go there and we will have a place to meet. So we absolutely want to continue that partnership. I know that's all topic, but what is that? Kids Hope, it's, um, it's a partnership with St. John's United Church of Christ and they have mentors that come in, meet with kids, talk to them, um, typically about once a week. So we, we identify some of those kids and um, we have mentors that come in. I will be sending a letter home to those that walk currently and ride the bus and see how many um, that we need. And Mary Beth is working on pickup points in those areas. It, you know, now we don't do door-to-door -door pickup. There, there just isn't time in the day to do that. That won't change. We will have points throughout the neighborhoods where kids would go to the corner for pickups. So we, we will be publishing, once she gets that set, we will be publishing that map. We'll have pictures of that on Facebook and all those, um, the website where you can access that and see which area or what corner your child would go to for pickup. And they would be dismissed back to that spot when they drop them off. Are all of the teachers teaching the same grades next year with the teaching issues? Um, there will be a couple changes just because the way Riley School is with our enrollment, we have to change around due to the size of classes. So there will be a couple changes. Um, right now, it looks like we'll have two kindergarten classes. So Mrs. Nork will stay in kindergarten, and Miss Hansen, who is currently kindergarten, first grade, will move to kindergarten. Mrs. Kitzman will be first grade, we're only gonna have one first grade class. We have a large, first grade class now, so we will keep them split so there will be two second grades. Mrs. Whirlin will be moving back down to second grade, and Mrs. Um, Han Herb, sorry, Her Mrs. Herb will stay in second grade. Mrs. Hine will be third grade, there will only be one session of third, one session of fourth, and one session of fifth. So Mr. Beeman will stay in fourth, Mr. Frederick will stay in fifth. Now, when we get in fourth and fifth grade, Typically, we switch. Mr. Frederick does all the ELA, Mr. Beeman does the math. That's not going to change. 
Those two will continue to switch classes and work with each other. They'll be in the same building, so that's an easy thing to do. So that won't change. So they're going to pretty much, Kenny's in fourth now, so he'll just keep those two teachers. In Absolutely. Yep. Yes. Okay, um, with the school changes and stuff, right now we have the choice of with us not living in your district, mm -hmm. coming to your school. Right. Is that going to change or be affected? If you are already part of limited choice, you already have to transport your child, so instead of bringing them here, you'll take them to Washington Christian. That won't change. So next year we won't have a tuition to pay? There right. isn't a tuition now to pay. No, no, there is no tuition fee with that goes along with limited choice. Yes. For your end of the day, are they going to release from the locations that they're at at 245 and transport to Washington, or will they, will they be at Washington at 245? They will be at Washington at 245. Because the one thing with the buses is they have to run those routes and then they've got to run another route for the middle school, high school. So they will leave the uh, um, free Methodist and community Methodist approximately 2.30 and then come back over to Washington Christian at the end of the day. Um, and I didn't mention this earlier, but every site that we have has an outdoor area where kids can still have recess. Um, uh, Washington Christian, they have some playground equipment, but we also have access to Greg Park. We will probably use Greg Park. New equipment, that's great. Our kids, are, they're not going to want to leave there. Um, Community Methodist, they have an outdoor area with equipment. They also have lots of green space. They also have a gym, as does Washington Christian that we can use. Free Methodist, they do not have playground equipment, but if you would come by here when fourth and fifth grade's outside, they don't use that playground equipment a lot anyway. But they do have a nice area outside that's grass where they can go out and have recess. So recess, those kind of things aren't going to change. They're still going to get art, music, PE. Our teachers will travel. That I don't see that being a difficult thing to do. So they will still continue to get all of those other classes that they get now. And we'll keep Dojo. Um, speaking of technology, there, there will be limited technology in some of the places. Washington Christian has, a, they have techno, you know, they have wireless already there. They will be working on getting at least some at the other sites. Teachers will have access to it so they can use Dojo. Teachers will have projectors and screens and document cameras similar to what they have now. Students in fourth and fifth grade probably aren't going to use their Chromebooks every day. And you know, that's okay because the Chromebook isn't what makes that classroom. It enhances it learning, but High quality teachers is what makes our kids learn today. And, and that's not changing. We will have high quality teachers just like we do now. Yes? What about for students that require going to be meeting and watching? If our goal would be that we will have choir there that you know with after school activities we'll have to work on some of that we don't have very much that takes place now like at the beginning of the school year it may be something that we really don't start until christmas when we're back here anything else and i'm sure when you guys will leave here you'll have questions to ask call email me, message us, um, but don't be afraid to ask. If you have a question, we want to answer it. So we appreciate you coming. If you talk to people that weren't here, spread the word that we've got a good plan. We want everyone to feel comfortable with this plan. I think if you ask our teachers, they're comfortable with the plan. We're gonna do this. We're gonna be back in our school by Christmas, and then we're gonna be loving life. So thank you all for coming. There's refreshments over here. 
samples are up here and frequently asked questions. Thank you.